Wife of the President, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, has promised more investment to support the future children through her pet project in 2017. The First Lady made this known through her senior special assistant when she received Nigeria's first baby of 2017 at the Gwarimpa General Hospital, Abuja. The chief medical doctor, however, called on the federal government to support the less privileged in society with free medical services as more families visit the hospital without funds. Nigeria's first baby of 2017 was born at the stroke of midnight on New Year's Day. 28-year-old Anne Ifi gave birth to a baby girl weighing 3.9 kg at the Gwarimpa General Hospital in Abuja. On her hospital bed, mother of baby Flourish Ogenetega clearly put aside the pains of the operation as representatives from the First Lady's office stormed the ward to welcome the new arrival. It's God I give hope to the hopeless. So I'm also advising mothers who are still waiting on God to hold on to God because he's the giver of children. His first child on the first day of the year, it is double celebration for the father. God did it. I really appreciate God for what he has done. As the first lady's entourage toured the children's section with baskets of gifts, the chief medical director seized the opportunity to appeal to the federal government to render more support. There is poverty all over. In fact, as we're going around, you see so many mothers, many of them cannot even pay their fees, you know, so we need the assistance of the federal government to actually uh, support the treatment of these children, even giving them free treatment. Medical health issue is one area that is our main focus. Conducting a series of tests of diff different medical issues like diabetes, um, hypertension, cancer, which you know she has been doing all throughout Nigeria since she became the wife of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For many parents with blessings like this, 2017 is another year to be hopeful about. There were many questions surrounding Nigeria's foreign policy in 2016. The new administration of President Mahmoudou Buhari had settled in, and so had the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Jeff Onyama. He had already begun work. Months later, we review how well Nigeria performed on the international scene in 2016. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Jeffrey Onyama, once said in 2016 that Africa remains a centerpiece of Nigeria's foreign policy. But as any expert on foreign policy knows, a country's foreign policy is usually a reflection of its domestic policy. In 2016, the federal government is more focused on growing and stabilizing the economy. Much of bilateral and multilateral meetings attended by President Mohamedou Buhari centered around rallying foreign investment for Nigeria. Economists said it was the best time to invest and the country considered borrowing from the IMF until China came to the rescue. President Mohamed Buhari paid a five-day visit to China in April on the invitation of the Chinese President Xi Jinping, aimed to strengthen diplomatic, trade and economic relations between the two countries. At the end of the visit, China announced an $80 billion deal with Nigeria to be effectively put across each of the sectors. While many frowned on the President's frequent trips out of the country, this one was highly commended. You can see what they are doing at the airports uh, in Abuja and in Lagos. Uh, the Chinese have, have come uh, to Nigeria and there are so many uh, prospects. Diplomatically, Nigeria has intervened in the political crisis in the Gambia. President Mahmoud Buhari joined the presidents of Liberia, Ghana and Senegal as part of an ECOWAS delegation to President Yaya Jame to urge him to step down. President Buhari's corruption fight was taken beyond the nation's shores as he called on countries in the international community to help return stolen monies. Nigeria is calling on this summit to create an anti-corruption infrastructure 
and a strategic action plan that will include the monitoring, tracing, and facilitating the recovery of stolen funds and assets hidden in secret accounts abroad. In April, the Swiss government announced it was returning $321 million to the Nigerian government. The money had been initially deposited in Luxembourg before being confiscated by the Swiss Republic Judiciary and Canton of Geneva following a December 11, 2014 forfeiture order. I reaffirm Nigeria's commitment. To President Buhari also addressed the UN General Assembly, where he showed Nigeria was not impervious to issues affecting the rest of the world. In September, he met with the then UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, with whom he discussed the war on Boko Haram. Fighting the insurgents group and Nigeria's economy dominated other bilateral meetings, such as his meeting with President Barack Obama. Towards the end of the year, the rest of the world commended Nigeria's efforts at helping to rescue 21 girls who were once kidnapped from Chibok. 2017 has begun and Africa awaits the rise of its giant as more challenges lie ahead for Nigeria to prove her foreign policy go beyond no words. Former Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshi, joins us now for a review of uh, 2016, Nigeria's foreign policy. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, too. Well, fancy you being here tonight on the 1st of January, but we do appreciate it. Nigeria's foreign policy in 2016, um, I know we've talked about this before. What did you make of it? Do you think we understood it? Well, I, I think number one, the 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 administration has tried to engage the world as best as it can. Uh, first, to um, explain its own uh, policies, uh, to solicit uh, support, particularly on the issue on the security issue and um, and the and the economy. But in direct question to, I mean, answer to your to your question. Uh, we, we are not punching as much as we should be, and obviously uh, for so many reasons, which has to do with the fact that uh, the environment has changed, the challenges facing the government itself has, uh, has changed, and, uh, and, and I think that because there are re uh, domestic issues has taken the, the forefront in quite a number of things that uh, we are doing today. Uh, but as the year ends, I, I think that uh, the Gambian situation provides us uh, a very good opportunity, you know, uh, to try and uh, restore our, our, our leadership in the, in the continent. And how we manage the, the, the Gambian issue, I think, will be a test of whether we are back in the forefront of uh, leadership or whether we still recline and, uh, you know, as uh, the accused President Obama often of leading from behind. Well, hopefully Nigeria is not leading from behind. <laughs> but in 2016, uh, as I said in the report, we did see President Muhammadu Buhari make a lot of international trips and many True. times was making True. policy statements from outside of the country that you know brought a lot of criticism. People said, why do we have a president who's outside? And people were even trying to predict uh, where the president will go to next. Mm -hmm. But do you think that at the end of the day, we have benefited more from those trips that the president has made or I mean, were they necessary, even? Well, not, not really. But we should understand that um, uh, some of these things take quite some time to, uh, to manifest itself. Uh, I think I heard in your report, um, uh, I think it was Professor Aki, you, body, you know, referring to the Chinese trip and to the airport you know, um, the, the, the airport issue was actually signed under the Jonathan administration. But the fact that they have continued that development, you know, is a clear indication of the fact that there's been a, some bit of uh, continuity. And it will take time even for the Chinese themselves to process, you know, um, the fund they've, they've uh, promised based on the how fast we are in providing all the information they need and in agreeing, you know, in signing some of the agreements that will enable the fund to be released. So we, we, we have to wait and see what happens in 2017, whether some of these funds will be released or whether some of those trips 
the agreements that were reached at uh, those trips will manifest this year. In many of the um, uh, global events that President Mohamed Buhari attended, uh, there were two major issues. You had anti-corruption, you also had insurgency, and at every opportunity he had, he called the attention of the international community to all of this. How well do you think it performed in trying to rally international support to help Nigeria recover stolen funds? And also, uh, the interest the world has shown in fighting Boko Haram insurgency. You know, on this issue of uh, stolen phone, you remember that um, previous administrations have also done some work on this. And the fact that we are still talking about this stolen phone, particularly uh, the Abacha loot to start with, it's a clear indication that we are not really making much headway. Because even those who promised to return, look, how long ago have we been on this Abacha loot and many of the funds have not been, you know, uh, returned? Um, some of the funds uh, taken away recently, perhaps some have been refunded, I mean, has been uh, brought back home, but we are still waiting for, you know, for some. I've always believed that we need to mobilize the international community around this question of corruption and, uh, you know, and uh, around this question of uh, fund, uh, fund return. You know the argument I always make, why we need to rally around the international community? Because it's not enough to insist that this fund should be returned to us. I've always made the point that both the giver and the taker are guilty, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I've always also made the point that, look, if somebody takes away like two billion, puts it in a bank for about four years, in four years, that same amount of money has earned some interest. So whether they return two billion or whether, you know, they do not return, the fact is that the banks or the people who kept that money, they've made so much money from it. Yeah. My position is that we need to rally around the international community and insist that both the regional, the, the, the deposit and the interest, you know, should be sent back to this country. For one main reason, that the very people who keep this fund are the people who give us lectures all the time about corruption in our, in our part of the world. It's a, it's a little bit, I, I just find, I think they are all hypocrites. They take the money, they keep it, they invest it, they make profits, then they turn around and give us lectures on corruption. It's not fair to us. Yeah, well, it, it does make sense then that the president is pushing this fight. Oh, yeah, certainly they, the they are pushing. Thank you so much, Ambassador Joe Keshi, for joining us tonight. Um, we hope we haven't taken much of your, your day and your celebration. Thank you. From the former opponent, uh, Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshi. You're welcome. Thank you.